Let me see if I get a program for you. Okay. 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 Okay.
fresh on us, fall afresh on us. Fill us with your power, fill us with your power. Satisfy your need, satisfy our need. Only you can make us Lord. Give us strength to make us Lord. Our Holy Spirit, all the fresh Lord. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Welcome as we come to celebrate, to remember the life of our sister, Marjorie Brayton. So we'll begin our funeral mass shortly. So I'll make my way to the main entrance and we shall begin from there.
Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Marjorie Brayton died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. We now sing together our entrance hymn, Enter into Jerusalem. Jerusalem, make we walk down there. Say to the breeze with the God of ancient peace, 
fact we walk and up there, we go celebrate. We go celebrate. We go celebrate. Oh, it's Ryan. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise the Lord with a heavenly song. With a heavenly song. With a heavenly song, praise the Lord. Enter, enter into Jerusalem. Let us go to God's house. With your papa and your mama, with your uncle and your aunt. Let us go to God's house. Enter into Jerusalem. Let us go to God's house. Run and catch a breeze with the God of the feet. Let us go to God's house. We go celebrate. Celebrate. Celebrate, celebrate, Lord Israel. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise the Lord with a heavenly song. With a heavenly song. With a heavenly song. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we have come together to renew our trust in Christ, who by dying on the cross has freed us from eternal death and by rising has opened for us the gates of heaven. Let us pray for our sister that she may share in Christ's victory. And let us pray for ourselves too that the Lord may grant us the gift of his loving consolation. So at this time, brothers and sisters, we may have our seats. We will have the eulogy, but before that, we have a piece by our brother Ethan Edwards, and then we'll have the eulogy.
Father Lindsay John. Is this one? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Father Lindsay John, ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, good afternoon. Thank you for being here with us as we formally bid adieu to our mother, our grandmother, our great grandmother, and our friend. We are here today to honor and celebrate the remarkable life of my grandmother, Marjorie Brayton, a woman whose presence has touched so many of our lives in profound ways. On 23rd January 1939, my grand, as I so fondly called her, was born to Peter Alexander Ford and Edna de Souza on High Street, San Fernando. At about three months old, however, Gran lost her mom and was raised by her maternal grandmother, the late Banji Monley. Coming from a humble foundation, it is my understanding that from the beginning, Gran carried with her a spirit of resilience, which was testament to many areas of her life. Her journey includes many chapters, with each chapter marked by her unwavering dedication to her family. Her background is rooted in a rich family history that extended beyond our shores. It included ancestral journeys from Panama, Grenada, then to Trinidad by the D'Souza clan. It also included Barbados and perhaps Martinique links to the Fords, as well as Maruga links to the Bretons. It seemed like every other person throughout the Caribbean was somehow, in some way, linked to my family. Fast forwarding a bit to 19th February 1966, at age 27, Gran married the love of her life, Fitzroy Breton, and together they raised seven children, Peter, Kenwin, Caroline, Steve, Andre, Andy and Natalie in a small apartment on Jamada Street in San Fernando. In this apartment, all seven kids shared one room. And with Marjorie in charge, there was still always room for more. Oftentimes, the room also included others like Philip, Ulrich, Sandra, Dane, and Jerry. If there's one thing about my grandmother, no one was ever turned away. The house was always filled with her children, their friends, and other relatives. She facilitated many brass band practices at home, turned the house into a full-fledged workshop for school plays. The house was always full of activity and full of life. Now, this was critical and perhaps even strategic because Jamada Street was a haven in the midst of a tough neighborhood. For those that don't know the area, let's just say that that was not without its challenges. But she would ensure as best as she could that her children were surrounded by positive influences. Bordered by many steel pan bands, music was an influential factor in her children's upbringing. Similarly, sport, many of them heavily involved with either football or cricket or both. As a matter of fact, my grandmother even awarded prizes for the Jamada Street in-house football and cricket competitions. As any good mother, Marjorie always wanted the best for her children. Peter, my daddy, Recalled when he passed for St. Benedict's College, certain persons cautioned her that that school only studied football. She ignored them and instead laid down her terms and conditions regarding his academics and extracurricular activities. Peter adhered to her laws meticulously, which resulted in a successful outcome while still playing saxophone, pan, and football. Grant constantly motivated her children to achieve their goals, and for Peter, this extended beyond the academics. She once told him, if you like cake so much, you better make it yourself. Well, consider it done. 
because today Peter enjoys baking. He makes all types of cakes and bakes, which she thoroughly enjoyed, even fulfilling her orders from time to time. Motivation is key. And that, coupled with her understanding of the intrinsic qualities of each of her children, made her mothering skills top-notch. Steve's fondest memories were during his latter teenage years with his time in junior achievement, JA. This program kept him busy with a multitude of activities. So many a times he was not home. So much so, that she nicknamed him Stray, a name they both laughed at every time she said it. But she never stopped him from attending his meetings and activities with the group. She saw it as an asset to this stage of his life and supported him all the way. He even attributed J.A. to his love for many other youth groups, which eventually led him into ministry. This drew them even closer later in life, establishing a prayer life together with the establishing a prayer life together with these last few years, something that he would forever cherish. Now, it's one thing to teach your children that the sky is the limit. It's another to put it in action. And Natalie got a live example in Form 5 at San Fernando Government Secondary. It was the first time that her school entered a secondary school's drama competition, where she was selected as stage manager responsible for all the costumes and props. But pressure? She couldn't find a seamstress willing to do any of the costumes. So, Gran never did anything like this before, but jumped in to save the day. She accepted the challenge and agreed to do the costumes for all of the characters in the play. As a first-time entrant, San Fernando Government Secondary not only won the competition, but copped the prize for the best stage management, including the costuming. Kudos to the costume designer, because she was a boss. And Natalie learned that day that there is nothing this woman could achieve especially when it came to her family. Marjorie was often described as strict by her children. She was a no-nonsense woman who never missed an opportunity to enforce disciplinary action, regardless of time or place. You know there's a saying, boys will be boys? Well, Marjorie's boys were no different. When she called you, you better answer and come. Can we learn this while playing pitch? She called and called and called Kenwin, and he heard her, but was laser focused on the game at hand. She eventually stopped calling. He emerged victorious, winning a pan full of marbles, and retired home with pride to boast of his achievements. My grandmother greeted him and said, Eh, eh, you win. Let me see the pan. Then proceeds to put the pan of marbles in a plate and said, Eat that now. You're not coming when I call you to eat. Eat that. <laughs> Gran also didn't discriminate when it came to sharing licks. She was fair and she was just. Now, remember, it was seven children in one room. So one night they ramp in and they all talking, they having a time. They were sent to bed a while ago and she continuously beckoned them to go to sleep, but they lie in strong until, bang, something hit the galvanized awning outside the bedroom window. This was immediately followed by a piercing ball. This time, it was Andre. He fell through the window of the two-story apartment building. His small frame slammed onto the awning at the first level before he ricocheted to the ground below. Like a wink, Marjorie was at his side. But prior to taking him to the hospital, she advised the remaining siblings, 
Nick's going to share when she returns. Gran not only had a stern side though, she was also pretty easygoing. Certainly, she knew how to seize the opportunity. She went out and about one afternoon with Carolyn and decided to pop into Papa Smurf Bakery on the coffee to get some pastries. Now, there are parking restrictions on Coffee Street, which Auntie Carol ignored, but quickly tried to rectify it when she caught wind of a police car. Luckily for her, she was with Gran, who noticed the men in uniform and decided to pose for pictures with them. If issuing any tickets were part of their agenda that afternoon, it was certainly aborted when these officers met Gran. Fast forwarding again, this time to the 10th of May, 1987. This was the day that Marjorie lost the love of her life to cancer. Two years later, after some encouragement from her sister Gloria, she decided to move to Canada. She initially stayed with Gloria, but ultimately carved a life of her own, forged through a life of challenges and triumphs. Graham taught us all the importance of perseverance. With just a primary school leaving certificate, and no real job experience, Gran got a job at Sam's Records and Distribution Center. While there, she went to Mohawk College to get her nursing certifications. On completion of her studies, Gran was able to secure a job as a registered caregiver at ComCare, where she stayed for the rest of her work life. Although she worked tirelessly, she enjoyed extending her hand to those in need and along the way, offering her wisdom to anyone who sought it. In this chapter of her life, Gran became an even more exceptional kind of person. She had the most amount of energy, nothing kept her back. She did everything she set her mind to do. She became such a strong, independent, get up and go type of woman, qualities that I personally admire. With Gran in Canada and us in TNT, although she was miles away from us, her love had no bounds. Talk about barrels and barrels of clothes, of toys, and other knickknacks that we, the grandchildren, got. Endless. The woman loved to shop. I am sure stores like Target and Walmart and shoppers rejoiced when Marjorie walked through their doors. When barrels reached the TNT, it was Christmas time. We, the grandchildren, were spoiled with all of her goodies and all of her goodness. Somehow, Gran knew each and every one of her grandchildren and was able to provide us with whatever we needed from her at a moment's notice. She had our backs when it came to the parents. We were all her baby girls and baby boys, and it didn't matter how old we got. She embodied the essence of unconditional love. She nurtured us with kindness and understanding, imparting invaluable lessons through her stories and experiences. And boy, did she have some stories. We learned all the mischief our parents did when growing up. Who came home late from the school? Who sneak out to play football or to play pan? Even those who steal hot food from the hot hut and kept it in their pants pocket. We learned it all. As such, when we became adults, it was only natural that in return, we had her back. Adulting with Gran was special. She became a friend, giving us all the latest gossip and back and out, sharing words of advice seasoned with a little humor. Although her energy dipped within these last few years, her sassy mouth was still very much intact. So powerful are her genes. Some of us may have even inherited the same sass, grandchildren and great-grandchildren alike. But I won't call any names, not at this point. I would admit though, 
it was hard to witness this dynamic, independent wonder of a person be in so much pain and become so dependent on others. At times, it left us feeling so helpless, especially as the pain worsened. But then, I am reminded of the words of one of our favorite Calypsonians and contemporaries, the Black Stalin, who sang, while we appreciate the little life got to give, regardless what's the hurt, we must think positive. Look on the brighter side. Look on the brighter side. I want us all to remember that while we would miss her, let's look on the brighter side. Because she is no longer in pain. And we pray that she is walking on her way to the Lord. In her final moments, she made it her business to say three wonderful words, which I believe is important for all of us to hear right now. Gran said, I love you. And Gran, we love you too. Rest peacefully. And we have another piece by our brother Jeremy Granado. Let us pray. O God, who are mercy for sinners and the happiness of your saints, give, we pray, to your servant Marjorie Brayton, for whom we perform the fraternal offices of burial, a share with your chosen ones in the blessedness you give. So that, one, so that on the day of resurrection, freed from the bonds of mortality, she may come before your face. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. On this mountain, A 
reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food. On this mountain, he will remove the morning veil covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth. For the Lord had said so. That day it will be said, See, this is our God, in whom we hope for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. We sing together. We sing together the Lord's my shepherd, the Kriman Fisher. Stand for the gospel acclamation. Hallelujah! 
Alle, 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 Come, you whom my father has blessed, says the Lord. Take for your heritage the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory be to you, Lord. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up the hill. There he sat down and was joined by his disciples. Then he began to speak. This is what he taught them. How happy are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy the gentle. They shall have the earth for their heritage. Happy those who mourn. They shall be comforted. Happy those who hunger and thirst for what is right. They shall be satisfied. Happy the merciful. They shall have mercy shown them. Happy the pure in heart. They shall see God. Happy the peacemakers. They shall be called sons of God. Happy those who are persecuted in the cause of right. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are you when people abuse you and persecute you and speak all kinds of calumny against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. So brothers and sisters, as we come this afternoon to pray together, to celebrate together, to remember the life of our sister, our mother, our grandmother, our great-grandmother, our aunt, our former co-worker, our friend, our neighbor, what else? Or everything. <laughs> yes, our good friend, Marjorie Brayton. We continue to pray for her soul. We continue to pray for ourselves as well. And for those who are nearest and dearest to her. In listening to the homily, to, sorry, in listening to the eulogy, you know, hearing a complete life, it sounded like, from the very beginning hearing of the formation of this life, you know, coming from different places, different regions, different parts of the Caribbean, and if you go higher up, different parts of the world, all right, to create this one person. And then in her being born and living, all the things that she would have done, I laughed a couple times because when I heard that story of the marble pitch, you know, it reminded me of a story in my own family, not saying who and what and what, but a long time ago, you know, when someone um, in the afternoon, as would happen some Sunday afternoons, the friends in the area walking down and one by one, they say, all right, we're going online. And you join them. All right, you're going online. And you join them. You know, you're 
going to cinema or whatever. And this one individual, ah, the rich, dressed already. Mm -hmm. You're going online, you're going to cinema, all right. And he step out. And his aunt is there looking at him. Go in, go in. And she waits until he reaches the group. And then she calls to him. Come a minute, please. And when he reached close, yes, auntie. You went to church this morning. No, auntie. Go inside and change your clothes, please. Oh, yeah. He said he changed his mind. Go ahead. That is how family life was. I hope somewhere it is still like that. Setting example, teaching what is right and following through with what is right. Because it's already established, if you don't go to church, no lime for you. If you don't go to church, no lime in the evening. All right, and so in this, this setting there. That is what was taking place. As we hear the readings today, as we hear the gospel reading today of Jesus sharing with the disciples and with the crowd, because there was a crowd gathered, we are hearing about some Beatitudes. Blessed are you, or in this text we would hear happy, Happy are the poor in spirit, happy the gentle, happy those who hunger. And Jesus is saying, happy are you, some strange kind of things, you know. The world does not see that as being, bringing about happiness. If you say, happy are the poor, happy the poor? How the poor could be happy? Then happy the poor in spirit. Hmm, going a little deeper there. Happy are the gentle. Oh, in the world today, you want me to be gentle? But Jesus is bringing about what we would call an upside down kingdom. And it's only upside down because it seems to be the reverse of what we on earth might say should be proper kingdom values. Jesus is saying no. You have it the wrong way. If you want to be happy, this is how you go. This is what you follow. This is what you are to put into practice. So just as we heard, you know, the coming together from different places, different regions in the world of one person. And then that one person touching the lives of those around them. God will take one person or God will take a very small group. And likewise, he would form them. Let me form this little group here and then he sends them out. And when he was speaking to the crowds, that is what Jesus was doing. In the Old Testament times, that is what God was doing. All right, let me take this little group here, the Israelites, these little nobodies. But I'm going to form them. And I'm going to form them with a purpose. So once they are formed, I'm going to send them out. And Jesus came to complete that work. And so the crowds that he's speaking with, nobody's as well. People like you, people like me. Nothing significant in life, nothing big to talk about. But Jesus chooses us. And he tells us, okay, I'm going to send you out. And I'm going to prepare you. So listen to my teaching and then follow my ways. Because Jesus did not only talk the talk, he lived it. Jesus lived what he taught. And so for us, when we hear this list, you know, happy are the peacemakers, happy are those who are persecuted in the cause of right, happy the pure of heart, happy the merciful, happy those who hunger and thirst for what is right. It's an invitation for us to 
put these values into practice. Where am I if I put myself into each of these um, virtues? Each of these beatitudes. All right, I might not be doing so good in this one. Okay, I need help in this one. You might find all of them. Lord, are struggling. Well, no problem. God is the one who will help us. God is the one who will empower us. God is the one who will take whatever level we are at. And once we say, okay, Lord, I trust you, help me with this, we will see things happen and we will see improvements. Amen. We are all here today to celebrate the life of our sister Marjorie. The amazing thing of, uh, is that all of us here, seated or standing or so, we still have our life to live. So we can take stock today and ask, what change is God inviting me to make today? What change is God inviting me to make in my life? I remember the good things of my sister Marjorie. I remember even the bad things of my sister Marjorie. All right, looking at the bad things to say, okay, all right, take a page there too and learn what not to do. And look at the good things and say, aha, all right, let me see if I can put those things into practice. Because I who still have life, don't know how long it will be. I might have 99 years again to live. But let me live it one day at a time and let me live it with the one who created me. The one who, even though I live 99 more years and say, wow, what a wonderful, nice, long life. That is nothing compared to eternity. And Almighty God invites us to live in that right relationship with him, to live in right relationship with one another, so that we are not only living a fulfilling life here while on earth, but we will be able to enjoy with him the happiness of heaven for all eternity. So as we come as we remember, as we celebrate, I invite us, you know, um, especially for those near and dear to our sister, you know, we may be going through some grief, go through that process. It is indeed that, a process. You know, very um, different stages of grief and so, and the best way to grieve is to grieve together. Don't grieve alone. And for all of us, you know, make some contact, make a call. Hey, how are you going? How are you doing today? And listen to the response. Even if we do not understand the response that we get, because we say, okay, I'm going to be open and listen. Mm -hmm. All right, I hear you. I don't fully understand, but know that I am here. Know that I am praying for you. Know that I am with you, even if not um, physically, I am with you spiritually. And so, brothers and sisters, on this great journey of life that God has put all of us in, let us think, Lord, today, in this month of July, 2024, where am I in my relationship with you? Come, Lord, come. Walk with me. Come, Lord, change me. Come, Lord, transform me. I invite you. You know, there are certain things I used to do, good things. I think those little gifts and talents, Lord, you gave them to me. I kind of slow down on them and or stop. Help me to wake those up again, Lord, and use them to serve my brothers and my sisters. Amen. For Lord, these 
the attitudes that you give, these values that you want to, us to instill in our lives. They are meant to build a kingdom where we can all journey together, we can all move forward in right relationship with each other. No crab and barrel situation, no rat race situation, no what else? Poor animals, eh? Animals getting these bad titles. <laughs> but we want to be human beings, brothers and sisters of each other, living together, loving each other, growing in right relationship. And of course, when, you know, we are all created uniquely, we'll have differences, we'll have little conflicts and so, let us work them through. Work them through. All right, don't be afraid to engage in conflict. Um, just pay attention to the way you might engage in conflict. But don't run from it. Because in engaging it, we will find ourselves coming out all the more better for it later on. As I was sharing some time ago, so another thing with, 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 with some relatives of mine, this is some older generations where one man wasn't and, and his brother, two siblings, brothers, they're not talking to each other. And the question was asked, yes, no, they're not talking each other, to each other. They know they're not talking to each other. Why are you not talking to this one? You know, I really can't remember. We had some fallout, I think. But I know I'm not talking to him. We already forget the reason, but we're still holding on to that decision we made. Whatever it was, okay, it happened. Time has gone. Many years have gone. So much time has gone that you forget the cause of the fallout. Let us learn to come back together. Let us learn to dialogue. Let us learn to forgive. Let us learn to reconcile. And of course, that too is a process. That too is not something that will happen instantly. Lord, you give me some things here to follow, some beatitudes. Let me look through the list and see which ones I need. And Lord, you is the one who have to give it to me, yes? I will try my little bit, but you, Lord, give me that grace. Give me that grace so I be more and more the person that you call me to be. And in being the person you call me to be, I can reach out. I can complete or help to complete this mission of yours as you have come to seek and save that which was lost, as you have come to call all people all over the world back into right relationship with you. Amen. Amen. So brothers and sisters, let's now stand as we have our prayers of intercession. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. For Marjorie, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she may now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our sister who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that she may be raised up on the last day. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. 
for the family and friends of our sister Marjorie, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. O God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So please be seated. At this time, we have the collection.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of the Almighty Father, for the praise and glory of His name, our good and the good of all His holy church. Be near, O Lord, we pray to your servant Marjorie, on whose funeral day we offer you this sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to her, or any human fault have affected her, it may, by your loving gift, be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. 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 Holy, 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 Lord God of Indeed, holy O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose name, at whose command, we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, 
when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Jason our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Madri, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to, have, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together. There is only one God. There is only one God, one King. There is only one King, one body. There is only one body, that is why we sing. So bind us together, Lord, bind us together with words that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who call to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But when we say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
help mommy responded beautifully really really beautifully at times until it was no more okay so i just want to give god all the praise and thanks for knowing her for the 63 years i'm alive yeah right and um it was such a pleasure. I, I don't know what I'll be doing now, but um, I'll miss her. I asked her last night, this morning, dry my tears, please. Please, please. And I asked God to help me to, to hold up. And I see that I am holding up. I also want to say thank you to my husband who stood with me. And many days, weeks, I haven't light a stove. Okay, because I came home tired, exhausted. So my daughter, if I have to go out, she would come and stay with mom. But what I want to say is thank you. Thank you to everybody so much for showing up. You all don't know what it feels like to have all of you all here celebrating her life. Thank you very much. Thanks, Father. Brothers and sisters, at this time we have the final condition and then the right of committal. So let us stand.
Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. And so we sink into your hands.
because God has chosen to call our sister Marjorie from this life to himself, we commit the body to the earth, for we are dust. And to dust we shall return. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory. For he is risen, the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our sister to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace her in peace and raise up her body on the last day. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen.
Because one day we come here and even the box will disintegrate. Yeah. The only chapter that might remain is the, the metal parts. Some time ago in Arima, maybe 10, 15 years ago, they opened a casket that was 15 or that was that was 15 or 16 years old. And Tanti was sitting on watching them. The only thing Spanish people were different. Eh? And apparently the ground had some kind of different thing. They said the grave diggers ran. They jumped the wall and they ran. But we were told she was dead for 15 or 16 years. Not expecting the same thing. That is very, very, very rare cases. But generally, most times, in a few years time, she will be there. So this is not her final resting place. Her body will, will remain in earth and, and give life to the, to the earth, but she will receive life in Christ. We have to enjoy her eternal reward, not just for today, but for all eternity. Amen. We are sad today, but as we all know, that when a new day dawn comes, dawn, joy rises with us in the morning. And God's mercies are renewed every day. So we weep now, but deep in our hearts there's joy. Because no more pain, no more no more pain, no more struggle, no more pain. What have we Pain is gone, that's not what us, pain is gone. So cry no more for her pain. Be proud of yourselves. But we still have to live it. Make sure that what she did, we can be and more. So that's one of the parents who did to have a place that we have that's what, that's, what, that's what Jesus did for us. He said, greater things than I have done, you yourselves will do. So live in that faith, live in that truth, and let, as Father said, let, let love reign. And let love bring us together. Let us grieve together. together. Let us be joyful together. together. Let us grow right. together. Let us rise in Christ together. And one day we will glorify God together with the angels and saints forever and ever. Amen. I love you, Lord. Lord, can take it off. For your mercy never fails me. All my days. All my days. I've been held in your hands. I'm moving that I wake up here until I lay my head. Your goodness is running out. 
My life laid down, I'm forever now. I give you, I give you everything, your goodness. Darling,
Right to step by the name and clearing land. This day, 